Hey Bears, Eric here, and apparently Grums is now pro-censorship. He is calling for censorship. He's no longer advocating against censorship. And you may be asking yourself, what? Why would he be like pro-censorship all of a sudden? Let me remind you about who Grums is before we talk about all of that. So Grums, over the last two or three months, maybe a little bit longer, has risen to popularity online by being completely hardline anti-censorship. And a lot of it has to do with the Stellar Blade game, all of the issues with that, from the graffiti on the wall to the costumes, just constantly, constantly complaining about supposed alleged censorship in that game. And um, he's also been against like Sweet Baby Inc. and DEI and all of this stuff. And he's cried about it ad nauseum on his Twitter, all of his social media, on podcasts, everywhere. So you might ask yourself, Eric, why all of a sudden would Grums shift focus from being anti-censorship to advocating for censorship? And the answer to that is very simple. It's Pride Month, and now we're seeing a lot of rainbow capitalism out there. More on that in a second. And so he's decided that now it is, it's time for him to start advocating for actual legal censorship of games. So a complete shift that hard line in the sand about like, we're not going to censor games because the language might be a little racist. We're not going to censor games because the outfits and stuff might be a little sexy things that, you know, he's like, I, you know, it's a pretty hard line. It's bad for gaming to now legally, we need to do something about stuff in gaming and it needs to be censored. And it, it happened with paper Mario. He talked about that. And now we're talking about call of duty and the uh, pride skins for like ammos and weapons and stuff like that. Uh, that's right. Call of Duty, a game where monetization is quite egregious across all of the different versions, including the mobile version, uh, where they sell skins and all kinds of cosmetic items constantly. It is something that goes on all the time in Call of Duty. Call of Duty is also a game where you go around and you shoot at people. That is the purpose of the game. That is what you do in the game. The game in itself is a violent game. It's also worth noting that Call of Duty and Stellar Blade are both rated mature games. Now, I'm not sure if every single iteration of Call of Duty is rated M, but I'm going to assume a game where shooting at each other in military situations is probably going to be rated mature across all variations of it. I don't know for sure. But I do know that the ones I looked up were rated mature, same as Stellar Blade. So they're not intended for kids to play them. These are made for like young adults and older. So let's see what Grumps has to say here about this. And then we're going to talk about the whole rainbow capitalism thing. So it starts out uh, in this post. Am I scroll down a little bit? I think I am. Okay. The lawsuit danger is real. So now he's concerned about Activision getting wrapped up in a lawsuit. So now, now he's on the side of like the studios and the, and the developers and stuff like that. He's on their side now um, in a different way. Now he's saying that they should listen to him and censor their games because there's a possible lawsuit. Okay, let's see what else he has to say. He starts talking about this right here. I'm not going to say it on screen because, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things that YouTube will flag. Uh, put Remington out of business, later sold under theory that Remington advertising recklessly encouraged by the violence, uh, by their marketing. The game is about shooting people. I just want to remind you that. The Call of Duty is about going around and shooting people. It's about guns and weapons and stuff. It, that's the, that is literally the premise of the game. Uh, this is the first time the legal theory succeeded. So Activision and Call of Duty just put their entire video game industry in jeopardy with their latest virtue signal. Right, so a company that uh, has been putting out this game for a very long time in a market where looter shooters and uh, online co-op like battle games like this are extremely prevalent. All of a sudden now there's a danger because of a skin that they offer in the game. Let's see what he says about this. Uh, legal needs to take down the pride ammo and pride operator skins immediately or it will be used against them. So he's complaining that we have pride skins offered in Call of Duty, a brand, an IP, where skins are part of the monetization process of the entire platform. All right, I think this is a good time to talk about rainbow or pink capitalism and the queer community because I wanna make this very clear. Most of our community, most of the people I know, we're aware that companies go out of their way during Pride Month 
to come up with things that will make us, the queer community, want to engage with their products. Now, some of them are genuine, like the people that work at these companies really want to make a difference. They really want to show allyship and they're out there doing their best to do that. And then you have companies that are doing it just to make money. Now, that's such a blurred gray area, unless someone explicitly states it, or it's super, super obvious that it's just for selling things. We're talking about like merch and stuff like that. Um, there's not a lot that can be, really be done about it. I mean, like in our community, it's, it's capitalism, right? So in our community, we can be aware of it and we can decide whether we want to spend our money there or if we want to go somewhere else and spend it on like a grassroots thing. We can do that. But ultimately, it is capitalism. This is what the country runs on. So if you're mad about rainbow capitalism and the issue you have with it is the rainbow and not the capitalism, then that is a problem. That is a problem. Are you mad that they monetize skins and ammo in general, and they have deceptive and egregious business practices that are anti-consumer? Are you mad about that? Or are you mad that it is a pride-themed capitalism issue? And I'm going to guess, based on his tweet, that it is about the pride situation. Therefore, it is targeted and it's not about an issue with capitalism. It's about an issue with the pride aspect of it. I also thought it's a good time to look through some of Grum's, um, you know, tweets here when it comes to censorship. So it seems like there's a pretty hard line here. Uh, he talks about censorship from Shift Up, um, Sony making the demands, not Shift Up themselves, which we, we Shift Up stepped up to the plate and they were like, no, 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 no. We totally wanted to do it. Now we're seeing that they're slowly putting back in some of these costumes and things. And it might've been a monetization situation all along. We don't know. The jury's still out on that one. Um, here we go. He's upset about, uh, this is, I believe, Hades too. He's upset about this character and censorship. He's upset over here about Fire Emblem Heroes and censorship. It's a lot of samey same here, right? Like like sexy stuff being censored all of a sudden. Uh, that's a problem. That's an issue. He has an issue with censorship in that regard, but he didn't have an issue with Paper Mario, um, or I should say he did have an issue with Paper Mario, uh, defining the character of Vivian in a bigger way by making her officially trans, even though it's sort of, again, a gray area on the way that character was defined in the previous game. And it was absolutely 100% censored in the original version before the remake, but absolute crickets on that uh, in terms of that censorship. So very pro censorship in that as well. Can't make the character too queer, even though the defining features of the character in the original game did definitely skew into the queer space. It just wasn't totally defined for outside markets and it was censored in outside markets. Um, here we go. More, more like anti, look at this. Th like this Grums is constantly on social media complaining about censorship, but for some reason, wink, wink, for some reason, pro censorship legally when it comes to Activision and Call of Duty for including pride skins in their content. Now, I, I think it's quite interesting that people say, oh, you you call, you call label people a lot of things. I'm not going to label Grums anything with this. I'm not going to label him. I think it speaks for itself, right? I don't have to put labels on it. So Grums is anti-censorship when it comes to objectifying women and seeing sexy women in video games. Anti-censorship when it comes to uh, possible perceived racist Languages, racial, racial microaggressive stuff in video games, that also doesn't need to be censored. And then on the flip side of that is, if it's a trans character in a game that was previously censored, he wants to put that character back in the closet. And if it's Activision and Call of Duty uh, showing some sort of allyship by making skins, ammo, things like that, available through their shops, similar to how they do with every other thing in their game because their shop, their monetization thing is, is it's always around. Um, then he has an issue with it. So he has an issue with a trans character and pride skins in a shop, but he does not have an issue with sexualized women and characters in video games, unless they're being covered up. So I don't have to say anything. It's pretty obvious what's happening here. So Grum's going back and saying that there should be some legal censorship of things in a game because he doesn't want it there and then starting to like make it seem like there's something insidious with that. 
on a game where it's already rated mature, it's already about shooting at people, and and an extremely violent game, it's already those things, but somehow adding the pride skins makes it worse. I'm going to let y'all sit on that for a second, and we'll get back to it 